Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to be continuing the series where we had set up Active Directory on Proxmox and our whole Microsoft Dev Home Lab environment. And in today's video, we're going to be joining our on-prem or our Proxmox Active Directory server to Azure AD, which will give us more abilities to tap into other things like Microsoft Purview and Microsoft Intune will be able to manage our users there, licenses that our users have to things like Office 365, and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll be syncing. Well, first we'll have to set up the connection between the two, and then we'll be able to sync our users over to Azure AD. And in order to do this, you're going to need a Azure AD tenant. And you can get that free along with the Microsoft 365 E5 license pack using the Microsoft Developer Program. And on this website, which I'll have linked down below with all the other information that I'll be talking about in this video, uh, you go to this site and you'll sign up for that tenant. And once you sign up for the tenant and you, you go through all the steps, it's not very hard, it doesn't take very long, then you'll end up at this dashboard that looks something like this. Or you'll see that this is your tenant information, and that you have a renewable E5. So as long as you continue using this, it'll just keep auto-renewing on its own. And here's your timer. So at the end of this 90 days, this would renew again automatically without you really having to do anything other than just keep using the tenant. And I've never had issues just using it with uh, what we're going to be doing here today, syncing users, assigning licenses, messing around with Intune, Purview, all the other things that you're going to get exposed to here. I've never had any issues with not being able to renew it. And you're going to get plenty of licenses. I think they give you 20 or 25 E5 licenses, which are pretty powerful, open up a lot of different options. I'll show you that here in a little bit. But you're going to want to head to the link that I have in the description, set up your Microsoft 365 developer account, and get signed into that. So once you have it created and you're at this page, you can go click this button to go to your subscription and it'll take you to this page and you can check out the admin center over here you can also go to the portal which i can't remember if there's a link to it in here but if not you can just go to portal.azure.com so we'll just do that here portal.azure.com and you'll log in with your developer account and that'll be the account that shows up on the dashboard here. So this account right here, that's the one that you wanna sign into everything with. So if we go back to the portal, uh, mine will look a little different than yours because I've already added some things in here, uh, stuff that I've been doing. Uh, but you're gonna have Microsoft Entra ID. It used to be um, Azure AD, but they've changed the name of it recently. You'll find with Microsoft, when it comes to their cloud products, they change the name of them a lot. So this is now Entra or Intra, however you want to refer to it. I've heard it both ways. Um, and this is basically like your Active Directory in the cloud, essentially. It's not exactly the same. Uh, you don't have like the GPO policies and stuff like that in here. A lot of that is handled through Intune, which we'll be talking about in future videos. But for now, this is where you're going to manage your users and everything. And right now, our users, uh, like the one that we created in our on-prem or the last video in our Proxmox server, whenever I say on-prem, I'm talking about the one that is set up in the previous video on Proxmox. Uh, those users are not in Azure Active Directory or Entra ID yet. So that's what we want to accomplish here today is setting up that sync. And Microsoft makes that pretty simple and straightforward, but there are a couple of things I want to talk about before we get into that. So whenever you're back at this homepage here and you go to subscriptions, subscriptions is what's going to allow you to use things in Azure like virtual machines, set up blob storages, storage spaces, uh, spaces SQL databases, and networking stuff there's a lot in there but you're not going to be able to use any of that unless you have a subscription and what you're going to find with this developer account that you set up is that you don't have the ability to add a subscription so if you click on add 
what you would like to be able to do is take advantage of this free trial or even a pay as you go or Azure student subscription. In order to do this, what you're going to need to do is the account that you created this Microsoft 365 uh, developer account with, not, not this one listed here as administrator, but the actual account that you use to sign up for this with. What you're going to want to do is head over to a different website. Um, yeah. I don't think I have it up here. Uh, yeah, I do here. You're going to want to go here. It'll be down in the description, and you're going to want to start a free Azure account. And what you can do then is transfer that subscription that gets created in this account over to your uh, developer tenant that you created. And I'm going to have a link to an article that explains how to do it. I've already done it and, and before this video. Uh, it's not too difficult of a process. So it'll only take you a few minutes to do. You're more or less waiting longer than you're actually doing anything for the transfer to happen. But... It will allow you to transfer that subscription into your account, which is what I've done. That's what you see here it is an Azure subscription that I transferred from the other account. You don't have to do this for what we're doing in this video today. This is just kind of a sidebar about it that if you want to take advantage of other things in Azure, such as virtual machines, networks, databases, and such, you're going to want to transfer over a subscription because you can't sign up for it directly in the developer tenant. The other thing that I want to talk about is your domain. So when we set up the Active Directory on-prem in Proxmox, we used a .local domain. Now, if you plan on using email and things in this developer tenant, um, then you may want to consider changing that domain from something other than .local something that is an actual resolvable domain like a .com, .net, etc. And uh, there's a few ways you can do that. Um, and I'm going to have another link down in the description because we're not going to be doing that here in this video today. It's not necessary for what we're doing. This is just for the future. If you plan on doing some of those things, you may want to consider using an actual domain instead of .local. There's other ways around it so that you don't have to change your domain on the Proxmox Active Directory server. You can add UPN suffixes and things like that to accomplish the same goal. And the article that I'll have linked down below from Microsoft will show you your options and how you can accomplish that. But again, today we're just going to keep the dot .local because for this and what we're going to be doing, we don't really care about email and things like that. It's not important to us here. So with that, we can go ahead and move on with setting up the connection between Entra ID or Azure AD and our on-prem Active Directory server. So to start, I want to go ahead and pull up Proxmox here, and we're going to turn on Remote Desktop. So that way we don't have to mess with things in this console anymore. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing you're going to need to do is obviously log in. And when you first log in, I've already logged in once, so I was technically just unlocking it. You should get the server manager to come up, but I'll go ahead and pull it up manually here. And you're going to, going to want to go to local server, and then right here you see remote desktop. And I've already enabled it, but it'll say disabled for you, so you'll click on that. And you'll need to change this uh, button here down to allow remote connections to this computer. Then you'll click on select users and you'll add the user, the one that we made a global admin or a domain admin in the last uh, video. You're going to want to add that account here and then you just hit OK. And that's going to allow us to use another tool in order to get a remote desktop connection on this computer. So for me, being on Linux, I'm going to use Ramina. That's the tool that I like to use. And you're going to want to hit the plus button up here and you'll choose RDP and you'll put in the IP address of this domain controller or Active Directory server. You put in your username. Uh, you don't need the domain here. If you're familiar with Windows environments sometimes and logins, you need to put a domain and then a slash and the actual username. You don't need to do that here. Then you put the password and then you'll put the domain down here. So you can see I've already got mine configured. And I'll pull this up so you can see how I did it. 
So I just have the IP address of the server, the username, the password, and then the domain without the .local part. So now we'll be able to connect to this with that account. And if you're doing this from a Windows machine, then let me pull up a uh, remote desktop here to show you what that looks like. If you were on a Windows device and you're wanting to remote into this server, you'll see this when you launch remote desktop and just hit show options. And here you're going to put the um, IP address of the server. And then here you're actually going to need to use that domain suffix here. So you put CD cloud and then backslash and then the username like that. And once you connect, it's going to prompt you for the password. So let's pull back up our remote desktop session. And from here, we don't need server manager, but we do need to pull up a browser. And what we're going to do is go to portal.azure.com and we're going to log in with our account. And that is the account for the developer tenant. So once we get logged in, like I said, you need to use the developer tenant one. Uh, find where I had that at. Uh, you're going to want to use this account to log into portal.azure.com. So now we'll make this bigger here. So from here, what we need to do is set up the connection and we need to download a piece of software to do that. So if you go into Entra ID and then you go down to Microsoft Entra Connect, we're going to click on Connect Sync. And here we have option to download Microsoft Entra Connect, and that's what we want to do. So we'll download this. We'll run it. I have some license agreement here. We'll go ahead and agree to that. And then we can use the express settings and it tells us down here that dot local is not a routable domain. That's what I was talking about before. That's okay. We'll just use the express settings. Now here we need to put in the global administrator. This is going to be the ID that we signed into this with. And then we'll need to put in the password for this account. And hit next. And it's going to ask us to do the exact same thing again. And then we we'll have to do our authentication. So now it wants the Active Directory Domain Services Enterprise Administrator credentials. So that is going to be the one that we have here on the local Proxmox. CD local, CD cloud. Uh, we're not a member of that group. So we need to pull up our server manager, or you could just pull up users and computers for Active Directory. We'll go to tools, and we'll go to users that in computers and we'll find this user. Uh, we put them under core users admin. So this user, they need to be a member of the enterprise admin group. So we'll click add. So now they're a member of that group. Now let's get past that. And again, here's a reminder about the fact that our uh, dot local is not routable and we can check this box and move on past this.
and here it's telling us what it's going to install and what's going to happen here and then we're going to start a sync when the when uh, all of this is complete so we'll click install all right our configuration is complete and you see we have a couple messages here telling us that it's complete and that it's strongly recommended to enable the recycle bins we click here we can learn more about that and here we have a link where we can find out how to enable it so we have to raise our forest functional level above 2008 r2 which we are we were 2016 and it's irreversible So, DSAC. And then here we want to add navigation nodes. Select the... We'll add our domain here, and then I'll hit OK. And our task pane, enable the recycle bin. Okay, so we've got that complete now. So we should have our users syncing at this point. So we'll go back to Entra and we'll go to Users. And we can see that this one right here came from our on-premises. You can see in this column that it's the on-premises is yes. Also this one, uh, those are the only two that have been brought over. Now if we create more accounts in here, we should see those come over as well. So at this point, we have our synchronization set up and it is currently working, so we've accomplished the goal of this video. And a future video, once we start getting into Intune, we'll talk about the synchronization of computers, joining those to Azure AD as hybrid. Also, Azure AD uh, joined machines that aren't hybrid. We'll get into all those discussions as well. There's so much more we can talk about here. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you was about the licensing. So if we go to my user here and we go to licenses, we can see that this user has the 365E5 developer account. If we click on that, we'll be able to see what that opens up to us. So these are all of the Microsoft products that this license entitles us to. So there's a lot in here, you know, from the SharePoint and O365 stuff to Power BI. Uh, we have Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Planner. We have Intune. Uh, we have Insider Risk Management, which is stuff that's kind of uh, built in the purview. Purview's in this list, too. Um, there's a lot, uh, a lot to digest here. You have the Bing Chat Enterprise, and you have Azure Information Protection Premium. That's part of the purview stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do with this license to try out in your own environment at home. Uh, but all those future videos... If there's something specifically that you want to see in this series, please leave a comment down below so then I can make a video about that. 
And if it's something I'm not familiar with, then I'll do the research on it and figure it out and then make a video about it that way. But there's a lot of things in this realm that I have experience with already. So if you want to see those videos, please let me know. And that's all I got for you today. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with this series. Thanks. See ya.